Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, folks. Hey, welcome to another episode of the Marketing Your Practice podcast, the podcast where I get to simplify the marketing and the mindset so you, the chiropractor, can increase your income, your impact, and your enjoyment in practice too. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about a topic that has a lot of chiropractors very excited, many chiropractors feeling nervous, and some chiropractors feeling understandably terrified. I'm going to be talking about the future of AI in chiropractic, and in particular, I'm going to be talking about chat GPT. Now, if you have no idea what I'm talking about with regard to chat GPT, um, be prepared to have your mind blown this episode as well. It's no secret that AI, artificial intelligence, has the potential to completely transform the way we do things as chiropractors. Um, it'll have an impact on things like diagnosis, treatment planning, personalized care plans, patient outcomes, and certainly it can have a huge and will have a huge impact on the way that we market our practice. I'm going to talk about uh, a lot of those. We'll go into great detail of that as we go forwards as well. But as with any technology as well, there are a whole bunch of really important ethical and philosophical considerations as well. I'll give you my kind of two cents on all of those. Now, let's kind of rewind back to the beginning of December. I was online scrolling through a couple of the people I were following. I noticed there was a whole bunch of conversations in around this chat GPT. Now, the GPT stands for Generative Pre-Trained Transformer. And so I signed up to this platform. Um, it was introduced or open to us um, uh, in November 30th, I think it was. It's the fastest platform in history to ever get to a million users. It did it uh, in less than five days, something like that, faster than anything else as well. So I then had my mind blown in a way with technology that I don't think I ever have. Now, I've, I've gone through, you know, I went through school when there was no internet, no email. And so it seemed that the introduction of these things were very slow. You know, I was impressed with iPhone one. Um, but I mean, if, if the iPhone 14 is what dropped on me, it, chat GPT, which is an artificial intelligence, still now a month later, my mind is still reeling from what's going on. So what is chat GPT? Let's start with that first of all. Okay. So as I mentioned, the GPT stands for a, a generative pre-trained transformer. In essence, what it is, is it's really a chat bot that's powered by artificial intelligence. What this chat bot has done is it has access to literally all the written text that's ever been entered into the internet and it has spent time analyzing that and you can have conversations with this chatbot about anything from how do i improve my relationship how do i get more fit to how do i market my practice to how do i come up with content we'll talk about that in a moment okay so it's a machine learning model that uses uh, a technique called transformer to process and analyze data okay it's designed to create text in a coherent, almost conversational way. So you can have a conversation with this chatbot, and it is remarkable um, how indistinct it is from actually chatting to another person. Now, that is both wonderful and terrifying as well. So at this stage, it's just a text conversation that you're having back and forward. So let's take one step back up a little higher and talk about what, what do they mean by artificial intelligence? I've been doing a lot of research on this as well. This is, in essence, the ability for computers to be able to do things that would normally require human intelligence, would normally require learning, problem solving, and decision making. Okay, There are three types of artificial intelligence. Generally, they talk about these are rule-based AIs. Okay, Now, these are the very most basic forms, but they just kind of follow rules more. There's machine learning. This type of artificial intelligence uses algorithms. Now, maybe we could say that um, the algorithms that are on both Facebook and social media, YouTube, that this is a, a, a kind of artificial intelligence. And then there's been this third type, which is what we've been waiting for. Some people have been concerned about, others are very excited about, which is referred to as like a deep learning. This deep learning type of artificial intelligence involves the use of very, very complex neural networks for it to process and analyze data, okay? So chat GPT would definitely come under the umbrella of this deep learning, okay? So how could we be using, or how, it's probably not how could be, it really is how will we be using artificial intelligence in the future um, as chiropractors? Well, I think there are many, let me go over a couple of different areas that we could be using it. It's already, and we'll certainly be using it in diagnosis and care planning. There's no doubt about that too. So the AI algorithms could be looking at 
posture, could be looking at range of motion. They will absolutely be helping to analyze x-rays. We'll be able to feed in information, complex information about the person's lifestyle, um, their history, which will then be able to direct us with the best way for us to care with this person. I think in the future, we'll be able to answer questions like what technique is best? How often is it best for us to be actually caring for these patients? It will be fascinating to see what role this has on diagnostic and care planning. Obviously, it, with regards to even further personalizing our care for it to be producing exercise plans, nutrition plans, stress management plans, all those adjunctive things that so many of us, particularly vitalistic lifestyle chiropractors, that were wanting to have tools that might support them in their care. Once we plugged in all the information about the patient, we could then say, hey, listen, can you please produce for me um, an eating plan for this person? Uh, and by the way, they don't like uh, bread or they don't like uh, beef. And it would come up with a you know, seven day, 30 day treatment, uh, sorry, eating plan for this person. Then you could break that down into meal options and then how do you go about cooking it? And then we could even at the end of it produce uh, a shopping list. But I'll, I'll, I'll talk more about some of my experiences with it uh, going forwards also. So it'll absolutely help with administrative tasks. So Google has already released footage of its AI <clears throat> amazingly. And this was right back in 2018 where its artificial intelligence, its chatbot, which also had a voice was able to speak in a voice that sounded nothing like a computer at all, rang up a hairdresser and made an appointment. And so it carried on a conversation back and forward. So it comes uh, it, easy to imagine that we could be using this sort of artificial intelligence chatbot, certainly to have text conversations with our patients and to make appointments with them, but even voice conversations in the future for us to make appointments with them also. So there'll be a whole bunch of administrative tasks that will be able to uh, use artificial intelligence with even things like um, our case notes, where it could be listening into the conversation that we're having with our patients and then create a whole bunch of case notes. So the ability for it to approve efficiency in practice and have us doing the things that we want to be doing, which is adjusting our patients and interacting and building relationships with them, and all of those outside things to move them to the side, the ability for that future to come, we're getting closer and closer to. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm going to talk about the ethical considerations and the philosophical challenges that might come around with this as well. But these are sort of areas that, you know, absolutely it could be used. In fact, let, let's talk about some of the ethical considerations as well. So obviously there's things like the big ones are patient privacy and consent. So just knowing that if we're going to be feeding their information into some kind of chatbot artificial intelligence, would you want that happening? You know, it would need to be de-identified and all those type of things that we have compliance issues even now with regards to how we're dealing with patient notes, um, how we're storing data, all of those things will need to be a part of it. But we need to ensure that we're complying with all of that. And these rules haven't even been written yet, so it's hard to know what's going on. Accuracy and fairness. So we have to assume because at the moment, chat GPT, this thing that I'm having conversations with and asking questions, it's not always right. And there might be a time in the future that, you know, if it misses a diagnosis, it misses something on x-ray, who's going to be held accountable from that from a malpractice point of view? Are the recommendations going to be accurate? Can you, is there an algorithm that you can bring all of these things together to understand the human condition as well. So this is something for us to think about. Transparency as well. So if I'm creating a care plan that's um, derived from AI, do I need to tell my patients about that? Do I want my care plan uh, coming from AI? Do I want my adjustment schedule uh, coming from that? Or do I want it coming from the chiropractor? And if you, the chiropractor, are using that as a tool, do you need to let your patients know? And of course, one of the ethical concerns is just the impact on employment because Potentially, this can take the role of a lot of your administrative staff. If it can be making appointments, if it can be receipting, if it can be having what seem like very real-time conversations, these are a lot of the roles that are being done by a lot of our chiropractic assistants, our CAs. And so there are certainly some um, ethical concerns in around that as well. <clears throat> Let's talk about some of the philosophical concerns as well. These get a little bit deeper, and these are some of the areas where uh, chiropractors in particular, not just chiropractors, but a lot of us are becoming really nervous and some people terrified. There is the potential, the very, very real potential that artificial intelligence will surpass. In fact, I don't think it's potential. It's, it's inevitable that the AI will surpass human intelligence and capabilities. And so there are a number of people that are really concerned 
that as it gets more sophisticated, as it bypasses our intelligence, our abilities from there too, that there will be a number of consequences with that, such as the displacement of human workers, the erosion of human autonomy. Um, will these machines do they have the ability for empathy and compassion? Uh, will what role will they see themselves in human society as well? There is the use for if I'm taking all this information from artificial intelligence, how do I know that it's not being malicious? That it's not there. We have seen, for instance, over the last number of years, that there have been a number of accounts on Facebook that have been set up by different countries with the uh, very uh, goal of it creating tension between left and right. A lot of these Russian sites that were set up particularly to start to create tension in amongst the left and right over in the US. But you imagine that if someone was able to control the AI and it was feeding information out to billions of people, if that information was consciously wrong, what kind of impact might that have? The ability, therefore, for AI to reinforce biases. Again, this is something we saw biases happening a lot um, with the pandemic and people who had different agendas. And if, they, if we're getting information from this supercomputer, from this artificial intelligence, who's to say that there are not government bodies that are putting biases inside of it? That's uh, incredibly concerning. The lack of accountability that might happen for artificial intelligence as well. So um, again, one of my concerns in around it, as you'll see when we'll talk about how it could help you with um, your marketing as well, is the ability for it to create fake, fake expertise. So in the past beforehand, if you were to create content, if you were to position yourself as an authority with your community, there had to be some substance behind it. But if you were to just go on to ChatGPT and ask it for, uh, to write an article for you, about the relationship between posture and health, and then for it to go through and create posture correction plans for you, exercises, lifestyle and around it, then all of a sudden, without you having any background in that, if you're not a chiropractor too, it can position you as an authority if I think that you wrote this article, when in actual fact you didn't write it, you didn't plagiarize it as well, but it has this ability for it to position you as a fake ex ex expert as well. So there are a number of real philosophical concerns. Now, <clears throat> maybe this is sounding for some of you a little depressing and overwhelming at the moment. I don't know where it will go. I, I, I've been thinking about this constantly for the last four to six weeks, but there are a number of areas that I'm very, very excited about it as well. And I think particularly with regards to marketing, with helping you to increase your impact, uh, um, uh, increase your income and your enjoyment in practice. There are several areas where it will be really helpful for that. So let's talk about, given that this is a marketing podcast, let's talk about how it can be helpful with that too. One of the first things I did when I got on chat GPT is I said, I'm wanting to create some articles in around posture and chiropractic. Can you please give me 10 video topics that I could create? And in less than 15 seconds, it created 10 video topics that were fabulous. Now I've had <clears throat> 25 years as a chiropractor. I've had 15 years as a content creator, particularly in around video. I have an area of expertise in around this and all 10 of these videos were beautifully created in terms of topic and ideas. I then grabbed one of those topics from there too. I said, can you write me a video script? And the video script it created was damn near perfect. I, I, my jaw nearly hit the floor when I read it. A wonderful, powerful and engaging introduction. Uh, the body part of it was interesting. Great bullet points that were accurate for what I know as a chiropractor. The advice was wonderful in the conclusion at the end. And I looked at this. One of the challenges that so many of you share with me about social media, about marketing is coming up with content creation. ChatGPT has now solved that problem for you. This is not a problem for you anymore because within a matter of moments, I had 10 video ideas and video scripts in them that even if you changed none of it, these videos would be great. Now we'll talk about why you might want to subtly change some of it as well, but content creation and issues in around content creation is, is something of the past. But you could also, along with that too, it goes a step further because it would allow you to optimize uh, again, when you are telling uh, the chat GPT who your patients are, it will know when they're online and it'll be able to optimize when you post, what you post about. It'll allow you to create descriptions for your posts that go along with everything that is 
tailored for you to reach the type of person that you want to reach. The algorithms and inside of these AIs, eventually what they'll be able to do and probably can do it right now is analyze the people that you're already looking after. It will therefore be able to tell you what sort of content to create for them. It will then create the scripts for that. Again, for blog posts, for videos. And again, many of these artificial intelligence uh, learning machines can also create images for you. It will also be able to tell you how to respond for any questions, comments, or even any trolls that might be reaching out to you. The area that I can see it most is when you're wanting to put together marketing plans, content creation plans. This continues to blow my mind. I had a coaching client this morning I was dealing with who does really wonderful work with women who are suffering from fatigue. And we said, can you come up with 10 video ideas, please, um, particularly with regards to fatigue and functional medicine? Came up with 10 video ideas. We grabbed one of those ideas there too, which was related particularly to low thyroid and adrenal issues. And we said, can you create a video script for that? He created a video script um, uh, that was wonderful. After that, one of the things it talked about in the video script is the importance of proper nutrition and managing low thyroid issues um, and uh, adrenal issues there as well. Then after that, I said, can you please put together an eating plan, how somebody should eat, a video with regards to that. It then created an eating plan. I then said after that, can you please create a seven day recipe plan? So not only did it create the recipes, all of this focus towards people with thyroid issues and adrenal issues, it created the recipe is from that too, and then also the cooking instructions. And then finally at the end of it, I said, can you please create for me a shopping list? So next it printed out a shopping list as a list there of everything I would need to buy if I wanted to cook those meals and the instructions there as well that would help me manage from a nutritional point of view my low thyroid and adrenal issues. All of this happened in under five minutes and almost all of it was the accuracy level of it was, you know, almost 100%. If you made no changes, it would have been wonderful content. But again, you could have put specifics in there. If you had a patient, for instance, that didn't like salmon, they were talking about getting good quality fats in there. You could say, create me a seven-day meal, meal plan for somebody with thyroid um, and adrenal issues, but they don't like salmon. It was able to do all of that. So from a content creation point of view, it's stunning. Now, I think this is going to... I've always found... Once you really understand the person that you're wanting to reach out and build relationships with in your community, actually coming up with content is very easy. I'm looking forward to the conversations I have with chiropractors going forward because one of the excuses for them not being on social media, and particularly one of the excuses for them not creating uh, videos, is that we use the safe excuse of, I don't know what content to create, because they therefore don't have to share the vulnerability that's really at what's underneath it is. I'm scared of being on camera. I'm scared of being rejected and I'm scared of failing, but it's much safer and much less vulnerable if we just say, I don't know what content to create. But like many things, myself included, when one excuse is taken away from us, then maybe we'll come up um, with another. So in summary, let's talk about a few of these things. Um, if you haven't had a play with ChatGPT, then set up a free account. This is the first time in history that a free tool has been made available to the general public. And there are a number of things I, I'm putting in all different conversations with, you know, what things can I do to better connect with my kids? What things can I do to improve my marriage? What things can I do to uh, uh, grow my business? And the answers that come back, the vast majority of things are, are just nothing short of absolute mind blowing as well. So there are some downsides with using it as a marketing tool. I want to talk about these as well. There, it would appear that Google at this stage can actually recognize and is more likely to recognize whether content is created from AI or whether it's created from us. Now, there is some indication that they may penalize content that is AI generated, which I find interesting because ultimately the AI generated content is likely to be more accurate, more easy to read, um, uh, better at doing the job that it's wanting to do than the content that we'll create. So why Google would penalize it, I'm not sure. But they're saying at this stage, that's something that they were doing. So if you're wanting to create all this content, blog posts, and all of a sudden start whacking them on your website, you might want to think twice about that. You might want to say, okay, I'm going to use this as a guide for me. And I'm going to use this as a guide. And then I'm going to tweak it. And I'm going to add my voice to it. I'm going to add uh, my personality to it. That's certainly how I'm encouraging community influencer members to be doing. So the content that comes from here 
lacks and may lack um, creativity and certainly will lack originality. I'm also not certain that if I ask a question and then you ask the same question sometime afterwards, we get the same answer. And so therefore, will we have all the same content on everybody's site? And again, if we have all the same content on everybody's site, then it loses that authority and that originality that comes as well. There is a lack of personal touch and human connection. The more that I'm looking at these answers from the AI chatbot, the more I can see a formula to it. And I wonder whether we might start to recognize this formula. There is also, again, one of the downsides of having it create your content is for its potential to spread misinformation. If you're not reading through the recommendations, if, you're, if you don't already know the topic, and you're putting together eating plans, stress management plans, mindfulness plans, chiropractic care plans, and you're not reading and reviewing this, there is the potential for this to spread misinformation and for it to cause more harm than good. So these are all things that you want to keep in mind. However, my encouragement for you is to get and have a play with this and use it as an inspiration, use it as a tool that not that guides you. There are many businesses at the moment that are using this and it's saving them hours, creating plans beforehand that might have taken them days that they can do in 30 minutes. And we can get back to doing the work that we want to do, which is adjusting our patience, is being with them, is connecting with people. And some of these tasks, like some of the marketing and the content creation stuff that has taken hours, we can use this to guide us going forward. So where to from here? Have a play with it, okay? Slowly. Remember, this is a tool. This is not something that's going to do everything for you. We've covered a fair bit today. What is um, artificial intelligence? What is chat GPT? What are some of the philosophical and ethical uh, dilemmas that go along with it? How will we be using it, not only in content creating, but using it to guide our care plans, using it to guide our, to guide our, our diagnostic skills, um, as well as a lot of the marketing as well. But it's very clear that AI has the potential to really enhance um, and improve the outcomes that we get uh, with our patients and the way that we connect with our community as well. But it's also really important to remember that this is just a tool. This is not a replacement for the expertise that we have as uh, practitioners, as human beings, as leaders inside our community. I'm sure that we will be having lots and lots of conversations around AI and in particular chat GPT as the year goes on and as we get into version two and version three and version four. I'd love to know your thoughts around this and are you using it? How are you using it? What results are you getting from here too? So perhaps reach out to me, whether it be on the socials, tell me your thoughts or maybe an email, angus at adiomedia.com. As always, folks, thanks for all that you do. Your community so desperately need you now more than ever. This beautiful chiropractic philosophy and the way that we look at the world, I think will help us to guide us even through tricky times like this as well. Thanks for all that you do. Look forward to seeing you back here real soon. Bye. If you've enjoyed listening to this podcast, you have to come and check out my Community Influencer Program. It's my monthly coaching program where we take all this material and I'll work with you to help you apply it, implement it, and systemize it. The Community Influencer Group Coaching Program is designed to help you increase your practice income, impact, and enjoyment. Join me over at angusPike.com forward slash join. That's angusPike.com forward slash join. I'd love to see you there.